In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cover a styrofoam ball in fondant and make it look like a baseball. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. This week I'm making a cake that has a baseball on the top and when I do something, it's a really big baseball. I like to use styrofoam rather than Rice Krispie treats because it's not as heavy and it holds up a little better. So I wanted, I originally was gonna just show you how to cover a styrofoam ball with fondant, but then I was like, people are gonna ask me how I did the baseball stitching. <laughs> so I filmed that, I didn't edit this yet, so I have to do a voiceover as I'm doing the stitching on there and I hope I, I, hope I do this right. <laughs> so let me stop rambling and let's get into the video. All right, I have this styrofoam ball that I'm going to cover in fondant. This is my white marshmallow fondant and before I decided to film this, I added the Tylose powder. You must, 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 must have Tylose powder added into the fondant. What I did, this is about a pound of fondant. I sprinkled about a half a teaspoon of Tylose powder on here and then knead it together and let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes so it can start to hold its shape. This way the fondant is not gonna stretch and tear or whatever as you put it around the styrofoam ball. This is, uh, I, I just got this at a local craft store. I could try to find it on Amazon and link it below. And I like to have a cutting board here. Also, I need a pair of scissors. And you're gonna need some buttercream icing. This is American buttercream. I can link my recipe for this in the description below. My hands, I just washed them. They are very clean. And I am going to smooth on buttercream with my hands and then smooth it with water and then cover it with the fondant. So, just gotta get your hands in here. And I am wiping buttercream on the entire ball. You don't want a very thick layer of buttercream. If the buttercream is thick, like this, when you put the fondant on it, the fondant is gonna dent and move around. So you just need a thin coating of the buttercream. Just making sure you get the entire thing covered. Perfect, now I'm gonna rinse my hands off. And now I just wanna take my, a little bit of water and smooth it over the buttercream, just smoothing this whole thing out. Just give the smoother surface to apply the fondant to. All right, this fondant was starting to get a little stiff, so I just popped it back in the microwave for about 15 seconds, so it's pliable. You have to make sure that you dry your hands <laughs> after you wash them off. A little bit of shortening on the countertop so it doesn't stick and just knead this together. Okay, now I wanna roll it out. A little cornstarch here, not powdered sugar. And roll this out. You don't want it super thin because you don't want it to tear, but you don't want it very thick. You have to just find your happy medium here. And as you can see, as I'm rolling it out, I lift it up and switch directions and then roll it out a little more. I could see a little air bubble that formed underneath, so I have a needle tool and I'm just gonna poke the needle up from underneath to pop that bubble. Um, that way I won't have a big hole in my fondant. And now this is the tricky part. And I don't know if people do this another way. This is the way that I do it. So you're gonna lift up the fondant and lay it on top of the ball. And now I'm gonna smooth it down as much as I can, like I'm smoothing it down a cake. So I'm pulling it out to the side and trying to smooth it down. This is gonna be a lot easier if this is on a turntable. So I'm just taking my hands down the side. And what I'm trying to do is get the fondant to tuck down underneath at the bottom. So I'm pulling it out and trying to tuck. <laughs> I just wanna cut off some of this excess. All right, now this is where it's gonna get a little weird. I'm gonna pick it up and it's gonna get a little wrinkly. That's okay, we'll work it out. So, uh, I already tore a little bit right here. Um, I'm gonna see if I can work with it. That really sucks, but whatever. So pick it up. I'm gonna gather all the fondant underneath. Now that looks horrible, but we gotta work with it. 
So I'm gonna squeeze it all like you're doing a ponytail. Take your scissors, cut a chunk of it off. You don't wanna cut it all the way off towards the ball, have a little bit hanging off. Now we're gonna work with it. So I'm squeezing the fondant. I'm like trying to pull the fondant all to this little point on the bottom. And see, I have a little tear here. I'm gonna have to patch that with a little bit of buttercream after this is done, and that's not a big deal. Um, kind of annoying, but whatever, it is what it is. So you see all these wrinkles here? What I'm trying to do is get all of the wrinkles down to the bottom of the ball. And I'm just squeezing my fingers here. So it's, I'm, it's like I'm kind of making a little ponytail, right? <laughs> and as it gets longer, Cut it off, but cut like with an inch away from the ball. And I'm gonna keep doing that. So I'm dragging my fingers together to try to get rid of the wrinkles and pull it all together at the bottom. Keep a little cornstarch down here. This is starting to stick to my hands a little bit, so I just want a little cornstarch. And again, as it gets a little longer, take my scissors, trim with like with an inch left. And I'm gonna keep doing this process of smoothing this up and trying to gather this all together at the bottom. And if you were gonna make something like a balloon, you could just leave it like that, right? And have the little nubbin at the bottom that looks like a balloon. Super mad that this just, this broke here. Um, but I guess it's good so that way I can show you how to repair it. So it still looks a little lumpy if you look at it, it's not perfect. You have to work with this for a little bit. And what I'm doing, I'm squeezing my fingers together and lifting up to try to smooth everything out. Once I get a little more of a nubbin, I'm gonna cut that off with like an inch left and keep doing the same thing, smoothing the wrinkles to the center. And this part here is gonna be the bottom of the ball. Again, cutting some off and leaving it a little bit on um, just as I continue the smoothing process. I'm gonna take a piece that I cut off, dip it in the cornstarch and then just start rubbing it on the wrinkles to try to buff those out. I feel a little bubble of air in here, so I'm gonna take my needle tool and just pop it so I can get rid of that air bubble. And again, I'm just trying to squeeze everything to this bottom part and cut it a little closer. So if you cut it too close, you're gonna have a big hole here. So you wanna try to get the fondant all together. So I'm squeezing harder. If you have too much icing on here, it's gonna to start to squeeze out. It's gonna to start to seep out the fondant. Just try to cut it a little bit closer. All right, now this looks pretty good. And some of the icing is coming out, so a paper towel here. I'm just going to wipe the extra icing off. And I'm just trying to pinch this excess piece together to try to get rid of a little bit more of that fondant. Making sure that this is completely on the bottom because this bottom part is going to be touching the cake. You're not going to be able to see it. Trim it a little closer. Good. This part that is on the bottom, this looks horrible. This is all bumpy. Unless you're making a moon, this would be perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this down onto the cornstarch and start to roll it around. And now I wanna smooth the whole thing out. So I could take a piece of fondant, dip it in the cornstarch and start smoothing the ball. 
Now this is the bottom of the ball where the wrinkles were, where the seam was. And I'm holding this very lightly in this hand. I'm not squeezing, trying not to make too many marks or impressions with my other hand. All right, so considering how that looked when we first did it to how it is now, it looks pretty good. I mean, there's still some wrinkles. It's not perfect, but we can hide those. I mean, that's not bad. This is the bottom part where we squeezed everything together. There are a couple wrinkles here. Um, luckily, I'm doing this in white. I'm making this a baseball, so uh, I'll be able to patch anything with some white buttercream. You won't be able to tell. Ooh, not bad, Car. All right, so now this is going to be the bottom, the very bottom where the seam was. So I have my cutting board back again, and I'm going to put the very bottom down on here. All right, now I wanna smooth out the top because it, it looks a hot mess. <laughs> so I find it easiest to smooth fondant with fondant. So I'm gonna get a chunk of fondant in my hand, tap it in some cornstarch and wipe it off. And then I'm using a light touch. So I'm smoothing any of the bumps out. I'm kind of smoothing it down the side. lightly holding it with my other hand so it doesn't roll around. And just looking down at the bottom, making sure that there's no big pieces sticking out. Um, it's gonna look a little flat if there's too much fondant. And again, just using a light touch and trying to smooth out any of the bumps. Now I picked it up and it is looking a little flat. So I just want to pop any air bubbles and same thing. Just try to squeeze that fondant together to try to get rid of that flat part. This process is a bit of a pain in the butt. This fondant was, was flattening out at the bottom. So if I just cut that away, good. Now, same thing, I'm gonna smooth this in the cornstarch. Good, and smooth it out. And that looks pretty good. So what I wanna do, I want this fondant to set a little bit before I start to handle it, because if I keep touching it, I'm gonna make indents in it. So I want the fondant to set. Um, and you can see this is where the fondant split just a little bit. I might be able to get some of the stitches there or later on once it's set, I can use a little buttercream and smooth that over and you're not gonna be able to tell. That's how you cover a styrofoam ball in fondant. A little challenging. <laughs> the hardest part about this is just getting it all smooth. So as it's drying, I'll take a piece of fondant like this and just smooth it out so it doesn't really dry with any lumps in it. And I'm gonna set this aside for a little bit and then I'll continue making the baseball. I started making the ball and then decided I wanted to film it for you. So what I did, I can I link this below. I found this pattern and I measured the ball and I made sure that it I printed out the pattern long enough so it would wrap around and meet at that spot. And I just took my Dresden tool and started pressing the paper against the ball and uh, carefully tracing the outside so I could get the impression of it on the ball so the lines would be right. And then I took my Dresden tool on the curved part and just deepened the line so I would know where to put all of the stitches. Now to make all of the stitches, I have a, some marshmallow fondant here. I popped it in the microwave. I'm putting it in the clay gun and I have the clay gun with the tiniest circle on here. I will link it below, um, but it's the smallest disc and I'm carefully pressing the little knob on the top, if you will, and squeezing it out so I can get this nice thin line that I can make the stitches with. I decided to transfer it to a cutting board uh, it's just going to make it easier so I don't have to transfer all of the little pieces. I have my X-Acto knife and I'm just, I'm just visualizing, you know, I'm just using my eyes to make sure that I can cut pieces that are about the same length. 
So they are, I don't know, what is that, like three quarters of an inch wide? It started sticking to my knife, so I, I took a wet paper towel to wipe the knife off. Wipe the knife off. So I'm just cutting a bunch of these little tiny lines, trying to make them as equal as possible. Now this fondant does have tylose in it, so I wanted to work fast before the tile the Tyler's dried out the fondant and I am just bending this in a little V shape and each one of them and just need to make sure that it comes to a point like I'm not curving it I'm trying to really push up and get a sharper corner in all of them now to put them on the baseball I have some piping gel here and a tiny little paintbrush and I can link everything that I use below and I have my Dresden tool. I'm using the pointier edge. Um, there's a flatter edge on that, but I use the pointier edge for this. So I'm dipping my paintbrush in the piping gel, getting one of the little stitches, and getting a nice coating of piping gel on the back. Don't do too much because you don't want it to seep out underneath and show on the white part. And then carefully spacing them apart and pressing it down and doing that a couple times uh, getting piping gel on the back and evenly placing it onto the ball. Now I don't want these stitches just sitting on top of the ball so I'm taking the pointy part of my Dresden tool and I'm going right where it touches the ball like I'm coming in a little bit so I can push these little ends into those points. I don't want to put the little hole too far to the outside of the stitch and now I'm taking the flatter part of the Dresden tool and using the curve and just pushing each end into the hole so it looks like it is being stitched in there it started sticking to my dresden tool so i just always have a wet paper towel so i can wipe off the fondant as it sticks but you could see i'm just like kind of dragging the end of it with the dresden tool and pushing it into the hole and i'm just going to continue to do that for all of the stitches following the line that i made with my dresden tool now you can see the bottom of this is a little flat. It's not perfect. That's okay. That's the part that's gonna be touching the cake. I have some little imperfections here in the ball and I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll fix it as I'm going. Now I'm laying this down. This is why the fondant needs to be stiff so it's not sitting on that flat part as I tried to get the stitches around the other side of the ball. I had to have it sit on its side. So I wanted to make sure that I'm gently pressing down I'm gently resting it so I don't put another indent on the side of the ball and then I lifted it with my other hand and as I'm you know putting the holes into the ball and pressing the stitches in the holes I'm supporting it with my hand rather than keeping it on the table so I don't get a flat part on the ball I guess you could also, you know, stick skewers in the bottom and do it on a styrofoam block or something like that. I just find that this is a little easier. And finally, I got to the last one and just evenly spacing it. And there we go. The stitches are finished. Okay, and now to cover up any of the imperfections, you can really only do this if you have the white fondant and matching white buttercream. And I just have a little bit of American buttercream on the palette knife and a dry paintbrush. And I'm kind of just grabbing a tiny bit of the buttercream and basically spackling any of the imperfections in the ball with the buttercream. And I have a little bit of water and I dipped the paintbrush in the water and I really wiped it off on a paper towel so it's a little damp and I'm just smoothing out the buttercream. I don't want any watermarks on the fondant um, and I'm doing the same thing now for these little wrinkles that are in the bottom, spackling them and then uh, making sure that it's completely covered with the buttercream and then taking a li lightly damp paper towel, uh, I'm sorry, paintbrush to smooth it out. Now I have some chocolate petal dust and a paintbrush and I just got a little tiny bit of the dust in the lid and I am just adding a little bit of detail. I think it looks better when it has some detail added to it because baseballs are a little dirty. So I just dusted the stitches and now I'm dusting the ball just making it look a little uh, more like a baseball. 
So here you go. How cool is this? I love the way this turned out. I didn't even know if I'd be able to do it. The stitches took a long time. It was probably a little over an hour getting all of the stitches in here. But look how awesome that looks. And also, the places where I put the buttercream to cover the cracks, it held on to the dust a little bit more. So just be aware, just be aware <laughs> if you have to fill in some cracks with some icing that the dust may stick to it. And I will show you the very bottom. It's not perfect. It's a little flat, right? However, you're not going to be able to tell. <laughs> um, and in order to stick this into the cake, I'm going to take two skewers and stick it in the bottom here and then just put it into the cake. The reason I like to do two skewers is that way it's not going to shift or twist once it's on the cake. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on social media and I have my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. If you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.